Amazon On Fire Episode 2, where we find out what we can do to help the rainforest, starting right now. Welcome to the Weird and Wacky Planet's Nature Just Got Real podcast for kids. Join KB Carr, author of the Weird and Wacky Planet series with Chuck Darwin, Tito and Captain Jack as they bring you the real skinny on what's really going on in the natural world. And now, here's your host, KB Carr. This is Amazon on Fire episode two. Remember that during the episode I had a horrible cold and Chelsea had no external mic. But again, this part two is where she covers the things that we can do as family, as a public, to uh, to help the rainforest. So please enjoy Amazon on Fire episode two. One of the other ones was why do rainforests really, what do they really mean to our planet? You know, why are they so important? So rainforests are, they say it's, it's the lungs of the planet, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that really mean? Um, essentially, they are cleaning our air. Uh, they, they are taking in a lot of carbon, carbon sequestering. And so when we're cutting them down, and it's not just in their area, it's all over. So when we cut them down, we're actually doing a lot of negative impact just to our air quality. And then that warms up the environment. So we see more of the greenhouse effect. We see uh, the you know and that affects the weather. They also take care of the watershed, so they actually clean our water and our air. So all of that cycling through, and we're seeing an impact as far as um, our environment globally. What's happening with weather and with climate and all sorts of things. Yeah. But they also uh, protect a lot of animals that we take for granted. So in your backyard, if you're in the Midwest. There's over 94 species of bird that migrate to the rainforest. So if we take down the rainforest, it, their summer home is gone. I mean, imagine you go on vacation to Florida and you get there and your hotel is just gone. So right. these animals need somewhere to live. Definitely had a lot of problems with birds being able to migrate back. Mm -hmm. um, that's another show. <laughs> yeah. But well, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Something that we talk about and we push a lot. You know, if you want to protect the rainforest, that's important, but you also have to protect your natural environment because, or your, your habitat, right, because right. those animals need somewhere, not just at the start and the finish of that migratory journey, but everywhere along the way, they're stopping. Exactly, exactly. All right, so now we need to talk about uh, what's happening out there. Um, as, as at the time of this recording, mm -hmm. uh, there are fires burning in the Amazon. Yes. And there's been a lot of news coverage yes. about it. And I know that, you know, a lot of kids have seen that coverage and, and it's concerning. It is. Uh, so I think we want to know, you know, why are parts of the rainforest, because you wouldn't think a rainforest would, would be so flammable. So why are parts of the rainforest on, on fire? Why is that happening? That's a big question. <laughs> Um, the first thing is that rainforests are not flammable. Um, what we are seeing happen is that the, if you have a rainforest in its natural state, it is so wet, it is so moist, even I when it's not so. rain. Right. So if you lit a fire, it would go out. What's happening is as farmers decide to, um, clear land for a field, they will burn their land and they'll do they'll keep that fire going so as a fire starts to burn all of the trees that aren't on fire near the fire start to dry out from that heat then they become more flammable right so okay. the more fire that we see starting the more all of that around it dries out and can then be lit on fire and as people burn more there's less area that's holding in that moisture so the remaining forest starts to dry out a lot faster. So okay. the, I think the important thing to remember is uh, the Amazon hasn't really, it's, it's not on fire, it's still on fire. Uh, you know, this has been a problem forever, but this year we're seeing, I think the last number I saw was 800% more fires this year. Wow. So we see a lot of that for cattle farming. That's kind of the biggest culprit of this. Uh, so 
one of the big things we could do is, you know, people talk about being vegan is the best thing for the environment. That's not feasible for everybody. That's not everybody's preference. I would need but, a cook. Right. <laughs> but, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but when we think about, you know, what could I do that makes a difference? Well, imagine if everybody you knew ate meat or beef half as often. So okay. maybe three days a week, you're not eating meat. Right. You're not becoming a vegetarian. But if half, if, if everybody does that half the time, then that's the same as half of people becoming vegetarians. Well, I could totally so, do that. Yeah. Right, right. Well, There's that's little that's change absolutely doable. Yeah. Or, you know, look into, I know in St. Louis, we have an organization called Known and Grown, where they partner with uh, local farms and local providers. So you can, you can say, oh, who, who do I know that has beef? And you can make sure that this is a group that you want to support. Well, a lot of areas have that. So, you know, are you supporting local farms? And sometimes that is more expensive. So, you know, maybe your parents don't want to foot that bill. But <laughs> if you talk to them and say, hey, can we support a local farmer, a local cattle farmer, and eat half as often, then, you know, maybe that's okay to do. So love that. that's one change. And that's, you know, the big culprit of fires. And as we change our demand, we change we change what they're doing with that land. Agreed. Uh, We're kind of building other, with our grocery, grocery bill. Right. Exactly, exactly. You know, they're, they're going to give us more than we need. So we need to reduce our needs. So there's less there. Love that, love that idea. And so my last question, this is kind of a signature question for the show. Um, mm -hmm. What do you want kids to know? What's your closing? What, what do you want them to know? So what I want kids to know is that they are the most powerful voice for our world. Um, the Children's Eternal Rainforest, the one that we primarily support, was started in the 80s by a group of second grade Swedish students. So second graders did this. There's nothing that stops you aside from feeling like who's going to listen to me. I mean, when we look at Greta coming over and she's talking now to the world leaders. Oh, she's so not, awesome but yeah. people are listening. Uh, it's, you know, when we talk about what can I do, tell people, tell people what's important to you. If you are having a birthday, you know your grandparents are getting you presents, you know your parents are getting you presents. Tell people that you want to do a fundraiser for a cause. Maybe that's yeah. the rainforest, maybe that's service dogs, maybe it's, you know, whatever's important to you, just don't be afraid to talk to people about it. Because a lot of times we don't, we don't know what we don't know. So maybe I'm really interested in a cause that you're passionate about, but I've just never heard of it. So we need to share. We need to share those things. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that as some, some of you may have seen this caught on my, on my wrist here. <laughs> this is a bracelet made out of rainforest jasper, and it's got a little uh, tree frog charm. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and it's available on the website. Um, so if you want one, uh, check it out on the, on the weirdandwackyplanet.com website in the store area. And uh, just know that part of the proceeds are going to Friends of the Rainforest. Okay, so Thank you. our con contribution to your, to your cause, which we firmly, firmly do believe in. Chelsea, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank we were you. to talk to you. And uh, we learned a lot about, uh, about what's going on in the rainforest. We appreciate it so much. And if anybody has questions, just send us an email. We're a small office, so we usually get right back. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the second part of Amazon on Fire. That concludes our Amazon on Fire episodes. And now a word from our sponsor. Would you like to meet an animal wearing pink armor and a white tutu? How about an underwater cutie with pink hair and blue fingernails? Or maybe a deer wearing a gas mask? Introduce yourself to these animals and more in the book Weird and Wacky Endangered Creatures 2, part of the Weird and Wacky Planet series by KB Carr. Discover them wherever books are sold and stick your nose into your own copy. Now here's Chuck Darwin with our Weird and Wacky Word of the Week. It's time for the Weird and Wacky Word of the Week. The Word of the Week is poaching. 
Poaching is a noun which means the illegal practice of trespassing on another's property to hunt or steal game without permission. Used as a verb, the word would be poach, as in to poach on another's land. See how many times you can use this word in a sentence today and impress someone with your genius. Until next week, I am Dr. Chuck Darwin. Cheerio. Thanks so much, Chuck. Try using that word in a sentence this week and see how that works out for you. Impress your teachers, your, your parents, and your friends. And now it's time for Ask the Captain. Take it away, Jack. Got a question? Ask the Captain. Ahoy, mateys. This week's question comes from Sean in Los Angeles. Sean wants to know where in the world the rainforests are found. Well, Sean, rainforests are found on every continent on Earth except Antarctica. There are two types of rainforests, tropical rainforests and temperate rainforests. Tropical rainforests are found closer to the equator. The largest tropical rainforests are in Southeast Asia, West Africa, and Central and South America. Temperate rainforests are found in North America on the Pacific coast and go from Northern California up into Canada. The Redwood National Forest is a great example of a temperate rainforest. Fun fact, they are called rainforests because of the large amount of rainfall they get every year. They cover only 6% of the, worst, the world's surface, but they contain more than half of the world's land and animal species. That's crazy, right? I hope that answers your question, Sean, and thank you for asking. If anyone else has a question, you can email it to me at naturejustgotreal at gmail.com. I'm always listening. This is Captain Jack signing off until next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jack. If you've got a question to ask Captain Jack, just email her at naturejustgotreal at gmail.com, and she would be happy to answer your questions. And now it's time for the Weird and Wacky Weekly Creature Feature with Tito. And now, the Weird and Wacky Weekly Creature Feature. This week's crazy critter is the tapa. There are four known species of tapas, although scientists may have discovered a fifth one. But the jury's still out on that. Three of the species live in Central and South America, and the other one lives in Southeast Asia. All tapir species are either endangered or vulnerable. Tapirs are related to horses, zebras, and rhinos. Some even have a short mane. It looks kind of like a mohawk. The tapir prefers the damp wooded areas of the rainforests and eats only plants, so that makes it an herbivore. Some tapirs can eat up to 75 pounds of plants a day. That's like someone's entire landscaping. Tapers have a nose and an upper lip that is prehensile, meaning it can move in all directions like a short trunk. They've also been known to run into the water to avoid predators, staying under water for hours. How do they breathe, you ask? They use that short trunk as a snorkel. <laughs> now that's a handy schnoz if you ask me. I'm Tito, and I'll see you all next week. That wraps up today's show, Amazon on Fire Part 2. And our question of the week is, do you think you and your family could go meatless for one day a week? I think I could do that. Let us know by leaving a comment here, either on iTunes or on um, YouTube. You can email it to naturejustgotreal at gmail.com or, or leave us a message at 616-259-6742. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. That wraps up the show for today. Thank you to our sponsor, Weird and Wacky Planet. And thank you for listening. Thank you for caring and thank you for sharing. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Let us know if you do and we might mention you on the show. Until next week, go have an adventure in your neighbourhood. <laughs>